Rockwood. My man KJ. And you know, I'm watching the NHL playoffs, which, like the um, NBA playoffs, run pretty much all spring. And I'm looking at the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And I'm just like, um, <laughs> are you sure this is an expansion team? I mean, this team in its very first season, 150 games, in its very first season, won its division. In its very first season, has a number two seed in the NHL playoffs in the uh, Western Conference. And are having an easier time in the playoffs than their more experienced counterparts did. Remember the Nashville Predators went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year. They're struggling to dispatch the Colorado Avalanche in their Western Conference quarterfinal. The Predators up three games to two. They have stunned the uh, Predators in Nashville two to one. And now have a sixth game in Denver on Sunday. Meanwhile, you have the Vegas Golden Knights who have yet to lose a playoff game in their history. (laughs) You look at it, I mean, they made history by being the first expansion team to ever sweep their first playoff series. You have teams that'll get in the playoffs first time and they will freeze up. Literally, like the ice they're playing on. And you look back and say, well, what the hell happened to them? Not so the Golden Knights. They took care of the Kings in four games, shutting them out twice, allowing three goals in four games. Think about that. Three goals in four games. And once again, another catastrophic Playoff failure for the Los Angeles Kings, a team that has been notoriously star-crossed over the years of playoff failures, their lone cup run of 2012 being the exception. But the Las Vegas Knights, are they for real? I mean, are they for real for real? I mean, a team like this isn't supposed to be playing into May. And this team might very well be playing into May. They take on the San Jose Sharks in the Western Conference semifinals, the Pacific Division Finals. San Jose more or less walked over another L.A.-based team, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, another team that's always been pretty star-crossed when it comes to playoff adversity. That's a team that just seems to never really get it. I mean, yes, they've won a couple of cups over the years, but I'm looking at their playoff record over the last few years, and they have stumbled out of the gates when it comes to postseason success. Now you wonder, can the Vegas Golden Knights get all the way to the Stanley Cup final and win it in their first damned year? No, I don't think they will. I honestly think Nashville, if they can get past Colorado, but we'll we'll deal with that later. I think Nashville should be able to take them out. If not them, Pittsburgh will no doubt undoubtedly be waiting in the final. If they can get past Philadelphia, they're having their own troubles with their Keystone State brethren in their first round matchup. But I'm looking at Vegas and wondering, a team like this loaded with good, young, hungry talent. Is this team that's not only built to last for this year, but years to come? Are we going to have to say that the road to Stanley Cup goes to Vegas every year? It's a point to ponder. Switching gears now to baseball. And have you seen Shohei Otani? If you haven't, that's a name as a baseball fan that may be unfamiliar to you. You need to know that name. This is a young man, 23 years old, 
coming out of the Japan Central League. The LA Angels posted the $30 million bidding price to attempt to sign him, and they did. And he looked a bit skittish in spring training. But since then, when the games really count, this young man has been playing absolutely obscene. He's hitting 13 for 36. That's a 342 clip. 342. I don't know the season. We have a small sample size, to be sure. Three home runs, 11 RBIs. For a hitter, he'd be earning his keep. But then you add in his pitching. Yes, the guy's a pitcher too. Two and one, 3.6 ERA and three starts. The guy pitches left-handed. And you watch this guy play. And you, you're blown away by his talent. I remember back in 2001 when Ichiro came on the scene and how he just blew up. But you had to, you had to think, Ichiro was 29. Ichiro had played 10 years in the Japan Central League. Ichiro knew how to hit. He's a professional hitter. First battle Hall of Famer, no, no question. He has always been one of the most dangerous hitters in the game. He's been playing the game the right way for 17 years in Major League Baseball. We're not even talking about the 10 years he played in the Japan Central League. He has over 4,500 total hits professionally. So he was the hallmark. Watching him play, watching him just gather hits like a, like a squirrel gathering nuts was fun to watch. He's in the twilight of his career, and he should be ending it here soon. But Otani, he went two for four Friday night against the Giants, getting his first hits against National League uh, uh, pitching. But you have to wonder, will he be forced to give up one of his roles, either as a pitcher or a hitter? Because of a pitcher, he is thoroughly dominant. You have a smattering of pitchers from Japan, Korea. They've made their mark in the in baseball, and they've played rather well, I would say. But how many have been truly dominant? Aside from maybe, say, Daisuke Matsuzaki. But then you added his element of hitting to be able to hit. And I'm not talking about just get a couple of decent hits, like, you know, how, like, Greg Maddox was a good hitting pitcher. Um, I, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Rick Ankiel comes to mind, but he was a pitcher that suddenly got the yips and came back and became a pretty decent hitter in his own right. But to be a pitcher and a hitter, playing full-time, double duty, you have to wonder how long... He's going to be able to keep this up. But for now, the sample size, though limited, first three, four weeks of the season, Otani has become a phenomenon. And people wonder if he's going to be able to carry that off. I, for one, am a bit skeptical. I want to see if he can be a player that can produce 15 wins pitching, bat 300. And you think with that Angels lineup, Solid as it is, if he fits in seamlessly with that lineup, that he could be a team, lead that team to be able to push the Astros, defending division, league, and world champions. Could they be able to push the Astros hard in a pennant race? It's still April, but we shall see. We talk about why the NFL is so scared of Cap and Brady and the fat dab and head slap. Coming up, stay close.